All right, so I got bored one day, and I was uh, just had surgery, so I figured I might as well try a sten. And uh, this kit took me, I don't know, to almost finish. It it probably five six hours worth of work. Uh, I got the kit from Apex for 140 bucks, and it came pretty decent. Uh, it was covered in a bunch of really uh, weird powder that looked like it was just completely rotted and rusty but uh i'll show you some pictures of that and then just a can of brake clean got it pretty uh pretty clean but uh the tube itself is from indianapolis ordinance i got the barrel from uh, uh gun broker i think for 70 bucks uh, i went with the sten mark ii the pistol grip is from i think i found it on ebay for 20 bucks but it wasn't too bad of a build uh, I still have to uh, parkerize it, but I want to make sure it functions correctly before I spend any more money on it. Uh, I can either do a parkerizing for 50 bucks or have it professionally done around here for about 120. But uh, it was, yeah. I wanted to keep the the welds pretty rough. I sanded them down just a little bit, but uh, the the whole thing was pretty easy. Uh, it was a little pricier than I actually thought at first, but just to cut the uh, cut the old tube off, you know this this is all original, and so is the magazine uh, housing. But just uh, a couple cuts there and there, and then you had to cut up here, and the, the bitch was uh, under here. There's a rivet that I I just sanded clean and. Uh, to be able to break this off because the tube goes out to here for uh, the spring housing but and uh, I did get the old uh, the old barrel nut off but it got destroyed the the uh, the threading got destroyed on it so I picked another one up for 30 bucks from one of the I can't even remember I've researched so much crap on this thing <laughs> but there's a ton of companies that make parts for them and uh, I don't know, I think all together I'm in the 600s for it. Uh, the semi-auto kit is also Indianapolis Ordinance. That's that's the killer. It's like 300 bucks. Uh, I just wish you could make open bolt uh, blowbacks, you know, semi-auto. And you can, but uh, ATF won't allow it. <coughs> but the, uh, the one thing on this thing is uh, that's cool for storage you just fold them down uh, I got the I milled the kit perfect I mean I'm a machinist and I milled it just dead on perfect but as you can see the magazines not the straight 90 degrees that uh, that usually they say they are but um, yeah it's probably about eight degrees off and uh, Indianapolis ordinance said that it's fine I mean I'm a little pissed off about that but what am I gonna do cut a new tube and but uh, I mean everything lines up the the bolt or the the striker catch and, and the trigger sear they all line up in here and uh, the one thing also it is it's pretty hard to charge this thing. I mean, you got to give it some go. But uh, I've been playing around with spring pressures. Just got to make sure that this isn't really too easy to get out of battery. The first time I did it, this thing was sloppy. But uh, now it's good to go. But I mean, the magazine and the ejector, everything's got to line up with the bolt. And it does with this magazine. So I'm just going to try it out. Uh, the trigger on this thing's pretty heavy. I haven't gauged it, but I would say eight pounds, nine pounds. It was heavier, uh, but you can also play with the springs on it. Just uh, milling wise, I just use a Dremel and a lot of hand files and a drill, and I got them pretty good. I'm just, I got to shape this just a little bit more, but uh, with the Indianapolis kit. This uh, 
it's got a functioning safety or you know hold back and uh, you can make this functioning I decided not to uh, I'm still gonna weld this probably but I just want to make sure the gun runs and uh, so that's a nice little feature that you can that you put in it with this Indianapolis kit it actually allows you to do it on some of the kits they don't allow it but uh yeah it is see <laughs> it is stiff as hell well, let me just get this out again you would think there we go that'd be uh maybe I got maybe I'll try to fix that but there's the the striker and uh it just catches on the sear. If you pull it back too far, I've noticed it gets stuck once in a while. And that's just a, a real big pain in the ass. Because uh, you got to get in there with a the screwdriver or you got to take this whole thing down. And it just it turns into not a fun time at the range. Uh, the one thing I wanted to do was, I hate this as a pistol. Uh, I, I really hate this thing as a pistol. I'm getting my CNR right now because I'm in Illinois. And that's the only way that you can get... Uh, uh, SBR license or you know stamps I don't know why a lot of guys have been you know uh, saying that I'm wrong but I've talked to the ATF a ton of times and done my research Illinois you need a CNR for a SBR it's just weird but this hopefully will be a SBR soon but I talked to the ATF also and you know I was like I got this stock and you know, I really don't want to put the stock on with this with this stupid barrel extension and have to weld it on. And then I was thinking, you know, I'll get a 16 inch barrel and I'll get and I'll have the stock. You know, so I could just switch these things out because you know this barrel nut just this is why I got the Mark II, not the Mark III, so I can make quick change barrels. The barrel just pops out. So that's a, it's a nice little feature of the Mark II. You just, so I was thinking, it's like, okay, if they allow it, I'll just switch between uh, the pistol grip and the 8-inch barrel and the 16-inch barrel and uh, rifle stock until I get a, you know, my, my SBR. And the ATF said as long as I build it as a pistol first, I would be able to do that, to switch between pistol and rifle or, you know, pistol and carbine. Uh, I have the letter. I'll, I'll post a little uh, picture of it. But, uh, I mean, some guys were, were like, you have to take this off first and that off first. They didn't really special or um, get into that. And I asked, you know, about uh, storage restrictions. And they said there are no storage restrictions. I can have all these parts right next to each other. And I've had other, you know, I've read other things where, where they kind of made it out to be like, if you have the parts next to each other, it's intent for an SBR. But for right now, the uh, the ATF says different. So I'm going to go ahead with that. I'm still waiting for my CNR. It should be in any day now. But it seems like it's going to be a pretty cool gun. I've always liked grease guns, and uh, those are... I've, I've looked into building them, but the, the kits are always incomplete. Or they're just just seem like a pain, but this thing, uh, I always like the Sten guns too, and uh, thing went together pretty good. Hopefully it'll it'll be accurate enough. the The biggest thing was trying to get this front sight to line up, and I did it with a straight edge. I didn't have my lasers, um, but it seems like it's it's pretty straight. Hopefully it, it'll shoot straight. But uh, these are usually uh, zeroed in for 100 yards. And, you know, I just got a little, just a little bead on it. Uh, I don't know if it's, if I'm going to adjust it or not. Or maybe just shave this down a little bit to, to bring it in or out. Uh, I mean, as long as it's, as long as it's in the middle, I really don't care about elevation on this thing. It's just a range toy. Uh, and just something cool to, play with or look at but uh, yeah if you guys are interested in building one of these just go for it they're not they're not crazy hard uh, this one's JL and Co 
uh, they're they're pretty easy. Just tuning them seems to be the the worst part with the springs, and uh, just making sure this is a this is a milled sear, uh, trigger sear. A lot of guys go with a stamp sear. Um, again, I'll see how this runs and if I have any issues, and that's it. I'll try the stamped one. But for now, there it is. I'll give you guys an update when I parkerize it and maybe do a range test with it. Thanks.